Well, conservative leader Pierre Polyev has written to the province's premiers asking them to eliminate sales taxes on new homes sold for under $1 million. The letter follows Polyev's pledge last week that if he becomes prime minister, he'll axe a federal sales tax on new homes sold for under $1 million. The conservatives estimate that this would reduce the cost of an $800,000 home by $40,000 and would spur construction of another 30,000 homes per year. And for more on this, we are joined live by federal conservative leader Pierre Polyev. Uh, good afternoon. And let's start with this, you know, just going along with this letter. What is the pledge? How is this going to help those families that you say need help? Well, we need to axe the tax on new homes uh, to bring down the price. After nine years of Trudeau and the NDP Liberals, housing costs have doubled. They've risen more in Canada than in any other G7 country. Uh, Vancouver is now the third and Toronto the 10th most overpriced housing market in the world, worse than Manhattan, London, England, and countless other places with more money and people and far less land. Doesn't make sense. The leading cause of higher home prices is government bureaucracy and taxes. A third of, of the cost is direct taxes alone. So I'm saying let's tax the taxes on homes. I'll get rid of the GST, the federal sales tax. That will lower prices by as much as 50 grand. Um, and then I'm calling on the premiers to do the same at a provincial level. If that happened in Ontario, it would lower uh, home prices by $106,000 or about $5,000 in lower annual mortgage payments. That would go, it would also stimulate 60 or 70,000 additional home building units every year that would further increase prices, increase affordability and decrease prices. So this is a common sense plan to ax the tax and build the homes. Okay, and along with that, you estimate that there will be $2.1 billion of revenue for government. Uh, how do you get to that number? How do you uh, equate that when you're cutting tax? So to be clear, the uh, I'll give you the math. The over four years, I expect getting rid of the federal GST would mean the federal the, the federal government would lose about 16 billion in revenue. However, I plan to cut eight billion dollars of useless bureaucracy for two housing programs that, by the government's own admission, haven't built any homes, and the other eight billion I will make up by. Uh, simply taking the government's own data that shows getting rid of the GST would stimulate about 30,000 ho extra homes built every year. And the uh, business and uh, workers that build those homes obviously contribute through their income tax. Uh, they would pay, a, they would contribute an extra $2.1 billion a year, not because of higher taxes, but because there'd be more jobs and more income for those businesses and workers. Uh, so that's how we would pay for this common sense tax cut to build the homes. And what about those families, especially here in the GTA, where, you know, getting that larger house for their growing family, it's going to yeah. be over a million dollars. Yeah. I think we need to look at that. Uh, there are some exorbitant markets uh, after nine years of Trudeau. You know, it's funny, Mr. Savage, if, if you and I had been talking eight, nine years ago before Trudeau, and we mentioned a million dollar home, we'd say, wow, that must be a castle uh, on the top of a hill somewhere, uh, because that's what a million dollars used to buy you. But you're right, now, after Trudeau doubled the costs, now there are a lot of homes that are, are, are not even in that range. So what I'm saying is for starter homes, uh, it should be completely tax free. Uh, but uh, down the road, we might have to look at um, how we deal with exorbitant markets like Toronto, Kitchener, Waterloo, Vancouver, et cetera, uh, that have burst over the million dollar mark for an average home, unbelievably after nine years of Trudeau. OK, now let's switch gears here for a little bit. You know, in this letter, you say um, as prime minister. So as prime minister, uh, you know, there's a big election south of the border. Whose administration do you think you'll have a better relationship, which will also be better for Canada, Harris or Trump? Well, I think the admin question we have for Canadians is who would be, which would be the better administration for, for our own country, Polyev or Trudeau? And obviously the answer is Polyev. Um, uh, after nine years of Trudeau with three different presidents, remember he had Obama, Trump, and Harris, uh, not Harris, uh, Biden, what has happened? 
$450 billion of our investment money has poured out of Canada into the United States. We used to get more U.S. investment from them than they got than they got from us, and now that is reversed. A half a trillion of our investment dollars, building mines, pipelines, businesses that pay American workers. I want our money back. So I will. My number one priority, whether it's Harris or Trump, is one to to, to drive a hard bargain with Washington on softwood lumber and on Buy America to get f fair and equal access for our construction, lumber, uh, cement, steel, aluminum businesses so that we can br get the jobs and the money back. Second, I'm gonna cut the taxes and the red tape so that we bring businesses, paychecks, and jobs back to Canada. Right now, Canadian workers make $20,000 less than their American counterparts. They get 55 cents of investment for every investment dollar an American worker gets. Why? Because of Trudeau's destructive economic policies that send our money, jobs, and businesses south. I will be cutting the taxes, balancing the budget, eliminating the red tape, and negotiating a hard bargain so that we can bring home our jobs and our businesses. Okay, some of the items that you just uh, touched on, they tie directly into NAFTA. So we have to talk about that because we all saw yeah. what happened with Canada under Na with NAFTA under Trump. Yeah. Yeah, it was a disaster. Trump uh, steamrolled over Trudeau, and Trudeau backed down. I mean, I was, I was so embarrassed when Trump said that Trudeau gave generously in those negotiations. Why would he give generously? Why would he sign a deal that keeps in place by America that discriminates against our cement, uh, uh, concrete, steel, aluminum, and other construction workers? Why would he sign a deal that allows America to keep in place and now double the tariffs on softwood lumber. Harper got us exemptions from both Buy America and softwood lumber in a matter of days. And Trudeau's had nine years and three presidents, and he, he's get, he's, we're getting hit harder than ever. I will drive a hard bargain, standing up for our workers, our jobs, and our business. I'll bring it home for this country. Okay, we have to wrap. Last, last thoughts, final few seconds. Look, I, I consider myself very blessed, um, as I'm sure you do, to be a Canadian. The country made us a promise. You work hard, you get good food, a nice home on a safe street. That promise is broken after nine years of Trudeau. But we've got a common sense plan to bring it back by axing taxes, building homes, fixing the budget, stopping the crime. We're gonna make this a country where anyone from anywhere can do anything, boundless possibility. Let's bring it home. All right, conservative leader Pierre Poliev, always a, pl always a pleasure. Although you said you were gonna be in studio this time, I know, I gotta get there. I'm stuck here in Ottawa. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you.